USA, home to the cradle of technology, known as Silicon Valley. It's remarkable to know that the USA having initiated the semiconductor industry has also continued to be on the top for nearly five decades. We have started to create videos to understand history, innovations and current semiconductor industry situations in the leading countries. We will be covering a couple of countries in this series and will conclude with India. Do watch our first video on Israel and subscribe for more such informative videos. Acquiring this knowledge will help us in grasping the present semiconductor industry scenario in India. During World War II, radar receivers used by soldiers needed solid state rectifiers to detect and convert microwave signals. This much needed military requirement was served by research and development in semiconductor technology. Bill Shockley was one of the researchers during the World War II era. He was famous for the invention of transistors at Bell Labs. After some time, he decided to leave Bell Labs in 1953 and then started Shockley Semiconductors. He placed it in Mountain View, close to the mother's hometown, Palo Alto. Even he wouldn't have imagined back then that his choice of location for the new company would create the Great Silicon Valley. Wondering where exactly this Silicon Valley is? The Santa Clara Valley in California, though a more accurate description would be everything starting from San Jose and going north to San Francisco. The presence of research and development projects at Moffett Field, at the Navy Sonar Labs in Oakland, plus Stanford and UC Berkeley universities to support research and development, also a slightly lower cost of real estate at that time made the Bay Area a suitable place for this technology hub. Few of the other famous inventors that we know, Julius Blank, Victor Grinich, Jean Honey, Eugene Kleiner, Jay Last, Gordon Murray, Robert Noisy and Sheldon Roberts started a competitor to Shockley, the Fairchild Semiconductors. And over the next few years, the eight men laid the foundation to US semiconductor industry. Blank stayed at Fairchild, Greenish left to teach at UCB and Stanford, Last and Roberts founded Teledyne, Gordon Murray and Robert Noisy founded Intel and Kleiner funded them. All of those stayed in the Bay Area and so the Silicon Valley and future of the USA semiconductor industry grew. In addition to the influx of government funds for the growth of semiconductor industry, two venture capital firms were founded in Silicon Valley, Kleiner Perkins and Sequoia Capital. These companies were still major venture capital firms today. During 1970s and 1980s, IT giants were created in Silicon Valley. This list includes icons such as Apple, Microsoft, as well as Atari, Oracle, Adobe, Sun Microsystems, and Cisco. The 1981 IPO of Apple generated $1.3 billion and spurred a massive influx of venture capital. Now, Silicon Valley has more venture capital companies than anywhere else on the globe today. USA is very well known for its technological innovations. From the first microprocessor Intel 4004 to ENIAC which is considered the world's first general purpose electronic digital computer. From ARPANET to predecessor of internet to wireless LAN technology all were invented in USA. These innovations were made possible all thanks to Jack Kilby of Texas Instruments and Robert Noisy of Fairchild Semiconductor inventing the integrated circuits. Consecutively, the use of semiconductors in building onboard computers kept exponentially growing. Noisy went on to co-found Intel Corporation in 1968. America started gaining traction in global semiconductor production due to the selection of Intel's processor in making of IBM PC. In addition to Intel, Motorola, AMD and TI kept pursuing and pushing the envelope of microprocessor performance and process nodes. Even till date, USA leads the semiconductor research and development space. Now the question is, even though the USA is one of the key players in semiconductor industry, why only few chips say made in USA? In 1990s, the US and Europe produced more than three quarters of world semiconductors. Now they produce less than a quarter. 
the epicenter of chip production shifted partially because governments outside the US offered financial incentives for factory constructions to build up domestic industry. Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and China have risen to squeeze out the US and Europe. And China is on the pace to become the world's largest chip producer by 2030. Watch our video on China and Taiwan semiconductor industry to understand the rising semiconductor landscape in these countries. Link is in the description. Chip companies also have been attracted by growing networks of suppliers outside of the US and the expanding workforce of skilled engineers capable of operating expensive manufacturing machinery. The growth of contract manufacturers like TSMC, the largest and most advanced of its kind, have helped speed the shift of chip making outside the US. South Korea's Samsung Electronic is another big player in the contract chip making business and most of the factories are not in the US. The raw material that go into the chip making including industrial chemicals and silicon crystals also largely come from outside the US. While other countries offer incentives to attract multi-billion dollar capital in semiconductor manufacturing and research development capacity, the US has one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world. So the other countries also make it cheaper to build. It cost $1 billion more to build and to operate a semiconductor manufacturing facility in the US over a 10 year period than it would in more tax friendly countries because of tax and incentive policies. This explains why most chips are not manufactured in USA. You must have seen made in China on many chips. As chips becomes for geopolitics in the 21st century, what oil was in the last one, the US government created laws to receive its stronghold on semiconductor industry. In August 2022, President Biden signed creating helpful incentives to produce semiconductor and science act into law. According to the White House statement, the Biden administration implemented this act to increase domestic production, secure American semiconductor supply chains and create American jobs. This act provides $52.7 billion in the form of direct funding, government loans and loan guarantees for research and development, cheap production and human resource development. For manufacturing incentives, the act provides $39 billion. This is one of the biggest investments from the US federal government in one industry and shows the deep rooted concerns about high reliance on foreign chips. The act prohibits companies who have received funding under its provisions from using such funding in the other countries and restricts investing in chip production in foreign countries of concern for 10 years. The act also limits American companies from conducting joint research or technology licensing efforts with foreign entities of concerns. All these provisions are to ensure that countries of concerns do not get hold of leading edge technology, which can be used against the US. Whether this act will revitalize the American semiconductor industry, create more jobs and bring America back to the leading position in the manufacturing domain, only time will tell. But as always, USA leads in the semiconductor research and development and design space. Let's look at the current US semiconductor ecosystem map which demonstrate the breadth of industry including location conducting research and development, intellectual property, chief design, suppliers of semiconductor manufacturing equipment and materials. With such a dense distribution of semiconductor companies, the USA is surely the global semiconductor powerhouse. What do you think? Who will win between US and China to become world's leading semiconductor powerhouse? Comment down your views below and subscribe to Planet Skills for more such insightful content. Thank you.